Hello and welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you today. We're going to be talking about healthy morning and the holidays. And in particular today, we're going to be talking about relatives and the holiday season and how we can walk through our expectations, our hopes and our fears. My hope is that as we go through this week together, we're going to have a couple of times when we're going to be live together. And we're going to have the opportunity to really explore how do we stay true to our grief and present for the holidays and make wise choices throughout it. So during the course of the week, we're going to be talking about things like the opportunities during the holidays to convert our grief to mourning with ease and grace, because that's what I'm all about. My name is Maria Klyovkov, and I am the executive director and the founder of the Healthy Morning Revolution. We're all about revolutionizing the way you think about your grief and mourning. And so what do we mean by revolutionizing? Really what we're talking about is finding a way to give ourselves permission to be with our grief. And the holidays, like any other special occasion, be it a birthday or an anniversary, it provides an opportunity for us to grow into and step into where our new relationship is with our loved one. It's a completely different way to think about grief and the grief journey. So I'm going to invite you to grab your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, glass of water, whatever it is that you have. Feel free to write comments in the comments section and I'll be monitoring it where I can and answering questions as we go. Right now, the focus for today is all about relationships. It's all about our relations and how do our family members support us in our grief journey? How can we support them in their grief journey? Remember, if you're mourning the loss of a loved one that is part of your family unit, you're not the only one who's grieving and mourning right now, right? And so it's going to be really important for us to identify not only our own needs during this grief journey, but also to identify and to be patient with and open to the needs of other members of our family. So that's where I really want to start the conversation because it's so easy to have expectations of the holidays and to be overwhelmed by them, to have expectations of how our families will or won't behave without ever really checking out with them if this is the truth of it. Is this really what we can expect to happen over the holidays. For many of us, we expect that people are going to pretend like our loved one hasn't died. For others, we expect that we're going to be cheering and, and toasting our loved ones um, and, and celebrating their life. And neither may be true. So the first thing we want to do is kind of wrap our head and our heart around the idea of having a conversation with our loved one before the holiday event. So for those of you who are in the States, I'm a dual citizen. I live in Canada, um, but I'm from New York originally, and there was no more important holiday for me than Thanksgiving. To this day, there is no more important holiday than Thanksgiving. And what's particularly true for Thanksgiving for me, because it's really a week-long holiday, right, in the U.S., because we have our travel time, we get there. It's really a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's this coming Thursday that is Thanksgiving. Um, historically, Wednesday has been the largest travel day in the United States, and it's been all about getting to be with family. We all know in this day of COVID, that's unlikely to happen, right? In fact, we're kind of hoping that it doesn't happen because we're not wanting to spread what's going on in the world. So we may have to reimagine the holidays. That actually works in our favor in some ways for those of us who are grieving. Now, please don't misunderstand me. There is nothing that replaces the hug of our family members and the idea of not being able to be at a dinner table with the people that we love um, can be really excruciating. For other people, particularly those who are early on in their grief journey, they may not even want to acknowledge Thanksgiving. So whichever side of the spectrum you are on or somewhere in the middle, as most of us will be, it's really important for us to start with identifying what is it that we do hope to get out of the holiday? What is it about Thanksgiving that is important to us? 
what is it what is it about whatever holiday follows that that we will be celebrating whether it's christmas or hanukkah or kwanzaa whatever um, the holiday is for for some you may have just been celebrating diwali whatever the celebration is that is true for your family it's providing an opportunity for you and we're going to talk tomorrow or sorry not tomorrow wednesday about the opportunities that holidays provide for us to step into our grief journey. For today, I wanna talk about laying the foundation for it because it's Monday. And for those of you for whom Thursday, you're already looking at a family holiday and you may already have made some plans around it, whether it's a Zoom meeting or whether you're going to be with people in person, um, we wanna look at what are the hopes and what are the fears? What hopes do we bring to the holiday season? First and foremost, I think it's fair to say that we hope to truly connect with our loved ones. Connection is possible even in this day and age of physical distancing. We used to call it social distancing until we realized that really is not going to support us in our journey. It's not social distancing, it's physical distancing because that's what we need to do physically. However, we can still connect with our loved ones thanks to all of the modern technologies, whether it's Zoom or it's telephone call or it's a FaceTime call that we do. There is this opportunity to truly connect with our loved ones. Now, we may need to be selective about which loved ones we let in, right? That, that may just be a truth of it. There may be some people who are going through their grief journey in a way that is not supportive of how we need to go through our grief journey. And that's why I'm saying it all starts with us identifying what do we need. Do we need to connect? Do we need to isolate? Do we need to protect ourselves from some people? So I want us to bring a little bit of gentleness and awareness into everything that happens in a family when somebody that we all love dies. Some people don't even want to deal with the word. Some people don't want to deal with the idea or the emotions. They're bearing and carrying their grief. They've done it since before the person died. And we know that that's not gonna be our pathway through it. We know that we need to talk about our loved one. We need to make a place for them at the table, so to say, right? And recently I've, I've gotten a question about that. I've gotten a question about how do I tell my one son that it's really important to have the other son present at the dinner table, that we need to make space somehow, some way. And there was some real fear around the conversation. And what I'm going to invite you all to do is check into where you might be feeling some fear around a conversation that if you only have the courage to have the conversation, so much discomfort on the day of the holiday can be spared. Because you see, when you have the conversation ahead of time, you don't have the pressure. If you wait for the day of the holiday, that can become a really explosive situation. But if we on Monday can do a phone call with our child, with our spouse, hopefully that's not a phone call, hopefully that's just a turning to them and saying, hey, can we have a conversation about this? If we can have that conversation where we explore what is it that we want from this holiday season, where we acknowledge jointly this is going to be different than it's ever been before. And it's going to be anyway, like I said, because of COVID. COVID provides us the perfect excuse, by the way. If, if what we need to do for ourselves is we need to let this holiday go by, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And if that's what's true in our hearts, if that's what we most need to do is to just let this one slide by, then we need to be willing to say that to others and say, you know what, I'm, I'm really just not up to this holiday right, right now in this moment. And so I'm going to choose not to participate. I'm going to choose not to be there. And if that's the right choice for you, only you know what's right for you, right? We have to be listening to our grief and let our grief tell us what is in our highest and best interest. And you may be surprised because when you really check in and listen to what your grief wants, your grief may want and long for you to be with family and for you to connect with family. 
the uh, year that my mother died, the first Thanksgiving after my mother died, and my mother was the matriarch. Thanksgiving was always at her house, and we all had such memories of when we were all children. Um, well, my mother had moved to Seattle with my father many years before, and we hadn't had that table for a long time. And then all of a sudden, um, she died in June. It wasn't all of a sudden. She, she had a chronic illness. Um, but she died in June of 2017. And Thanksgiving of 2017, I decided that I needed to um, do a memorial in New York. And I needed to be in New York for Thanksgiving. Because I knew for this holiday, I needed to do something different. And I needed to honor her in some way. And so we made Wednesday of Thanksgiving week the memorial for my mother in New York. It was a very special and blessed time with my family. And I, a native New Yorker who had never been to the New York Macy's Day Parade, I always watched it on television, but I had never been there in person, we decided that we would go into the city on Thanksgiving and that the family would do something special. I'm actually going to post a picture about that because I'd love for you guys to see. We actually ended up um, there for the very tail end of the parade. But what we wanted to do is we went up the Empire State Building. And here's a good key for you when everything opens up again. Um, the end of, of the Macy's Day Parade is a great time to go to the Empire State Building because there are no lines. Just a little hint. Anyway, the point of this being I longed to be with family, but I longed to be with family in a different way where I could speak about my mother and they could tell me about my mother and their memories of my mother and the conversation of the, the Thanksgiving table that she created for us all, that came up, that came up in the memorial. It was a really good memorial where stories came forward and that carried over into the weekend. The holiday is an opportunity when you can share stories if family members are up to it and that's the caveat. If family members are able to be a part of it, if family members are not able to be part of it, bringing grace to that, bringing patience to that, understanding that everybody's grief moves at its own pace, and you're not the only person grieving in the room, and they're not the only person grieving in the room. Having families learn how to walk together in the grief journey having families learn how to speak about their needs and their hopes and their fears so that for this precious mother to be able to say to her one son, I, I really need to do something and then to invite the son in on the conversation of what would that look like for you? How, how would that be comfortable for you? If we remember that we don't have to have it our way we just need to speak our need and then we can together explore what is the right way. We can find the right way to walk through the holidays with ease and grace with the entire family together. That's the invitation and that's the hope. And it is my sincere hope that you all find your pathway to that, that you find what's true for you in that. Because when we can speak our needs, then we can speak our hopes and our fears. I hope that in this holiday season, I get to feel my loved one again somehow. It's the building of the relationship, right? When my mother was gone, I was hoping that I would feel her somehow. And I was making sure that I was not in a scenario that would remind me of holidays gone by and what I was missing that year. It's an and with, not an either or. I'm hoping that that makes sense. I see that there are a number of you on live with me, so feel free, like I said, to put comments in the comment section, and I'll be happy to answer any questions or any thoughts that come up. Um, I think what is important really changes through life. Isn't that true? Absolutely. I think of Thanksgiving when I was a child, and so many of those precious people are gone now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and when that happens, when all of those precious people who we love so dearly are no longer there, are no longer present, it's, um, it, it, there's a sadness there. And we need to be willing to be present to the sadness, present to 
you know, I, I wish for those days. I long for those days. And you know what I loved about those days? And then you can start speaking the memories. And as you start speaking the memories, you actually get to reclaim the memories. It's when we push against it and, and we hide away from it that we're bearing and carrying our grief, and then we don't get to reclaim them. Those memories become joyful when we can remember them and share them and recognize that they were a precious time in our lives and we wouldn't have given that up for anything. And now there's a possibility for something new, right? I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm hearing my aunt and I are the only ones left from the original family. You know, it's it's interesting you're saying that because I was looking through family pictures and, and I was looking at um, maybe my last decade of, of Thanksgivings, which were spent with my parents and my grandparents, sorry, my parents and my godparents in, um, in Seattle. And in the past 10 years, all four of them died. In the past four years, three of the four died. My father was the first 10 years ago, but in the last four years, three of them died. And so it's, it's staggering when you have one after the other and, and you long for that table, the table that you're never going to see again, right? And yet to be present with that and to allow the emotions to move through so that you're not fighting against it, but instead you say, okay, so who would have memories of these people? Maybe Thanksgiving this year becomes about my remembering them and honoring them by seeking out family members who can share stories about them and their memories about them. What do you remember about my mother? What do you remember about my father? That healing, healing day in New York three years ago when we were sharing memories of my parents and their Thanksgiving table, um, we laughed hard. We cried hard too. It's an and with. And so the holidays are going to be different than they were before. That is for sure. The question is, what can we bring to this holiday season that will allow the memories to flow gently so that when tears come, there's an open and safe space for the tears. And then if there's an open and safe space for the tears, the tears move gently through us. Then it's not um, we have to fight against the tears, particularly if we have an agreement within the family, right? So the key again is in the conversation and having the agreement with the family. Can we agree that we want to honor our loved one who is gone? Can we agree that this, this table is going to be a little bit different? Maybe instead of having thanks for um, all of the abundance in our life. Maybe this year is about gratitude for the people in our lives, the people who are no longer physically here and the people who are very much physically here. Can we find a way to find a balance in that? And I just put that out there as a possibility, right? Is, is there a way... Um, that, that we can be gentle with each other and supportive of each other. And the holidays, we already acknowledge together collectively that it's going to feel different, it's going to look different. I don't think there's anybody on the planet who thinks that the holidays are either going to feel or look the same as they have in years gone by. Even if you have a family intact, that's not the reality of this holiday. This holiday is going to be very different. What's going to make it special is how we choose to approach it and how we choose to connect. Yeah, I see here. Um, losses seem to come together often. Absolutely. My spouse lost mom, dad, and uncle within a few months in 2014. Yeah. Yeah, and when we have that kind of bereavement overload, it takes time. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Time doesn't heal the wounds of grief. That's a myth. Because it, it all sits on, what do we do with our time? What are you going to do with your time 
of being in grief? Are you going to allow the grief journey to help you to see where the relationship with your loved one is right now? Or are you just going to say, you know what, I'm just going to suffer through this particular holiday and then hopefully by next holiday it'll be better. Because here's the thing, that hopeful by next holiday it will be better, the only way next holiday will be better is if we stay present to the grief in this holiday and present to the grief that crops up throughout the coming year. It's as we stay present, as we are willing to go through our grief journey, as we get curious about what our grief journey has to, to teach us about life, about the life of our loved one, as we do this, absolutely, it's the gentleness, right? It's all about the gentleness that we bring to this and the courage. Because let's face it, grief isn't for wimps, right? It, it really does take courage. It takes courage to be willing to articulate, this is my need right now. It takes courage to be willing to say, what do you need? Even in a time when I am grieving, I'm really curious what would be supportive of you. And finding in all of that where the truth sits. When we are able to find where the truth sits and what is true for us to do in this moment, in this holiday, that's the key. I also wanted to take a minute to speak to anybody who is dealing with anticipatory grief. I know we have a, at least a couple of people in this group who are in that situation. Um, I, it, it is an incredibly challenging time when you know that this is potentially the last holiday that you're going to have with your loved one physically. This is a really good time to have the conversations that you're feeling the need to have and to let go of anything that doesn't feel true to do, right? Can we just enjoy this particular holiday for what this holiday has to offer? So my mother, I'm gonna go back to my mother's last Christmas because it was such a touching, moving thing that happened. In my mother's last Christmas, um, I, I was not with her. I had made the conscious choice to stay at home in Canada and she was in Seattle. And um, that was a hard choice to make and yet it felt true. And I've been asked since then whether I regret that choice. And when I look back on it, because I had reflected on all of my options and I spoke with her honestly about what was going on in my world. And we didn't know at that time that that would be our last potential Christmas together. Um, but we knew that she wasn't well. And it felt truer for me to be with her at a different time of year. And that felt more important to her as well. And so we made that choice collectively together. So we were not physically together. And yet one of my sweetest holiday memories is of being with her on Christmas Eve on the telephone because we had a family tradition of singing Silent Night. And, um, and I called her on Christmas Eve. And I said, you know, Mom, the only thing I really want to do tonight, today, this moment, is I want to turn on the lights to the Christmas tree the way that we used to, with no other lights in the house, and I want to sing Silent Night with you over the phone. And she said, oh, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't like to sing and I don't remember the words. And she had all kinds of excuses why she didn't want to do it. And so I, I let it go. And I said, all right, well, if, if that doesn't feel true for you. Um, and so we started talking about other stuff. And as we talked through memories of other Christmases and such, um, she said, all right, let's try. <laughs> And over the phone, I heard her voice so clearly, and I know she heard my voice the way I heard her voice through the phone. And it wasn't good. Neither one of us sing well. But it was such a beautiful, touching moment, and, and it lives with me forever. Holidays are about the memories that you make. So for those of you who are in anticipatory grief, don't miss this opportunity to... Find the connective tissue. That's my wish for you. And for those of us who do not have our, our loved ones in the physical presence, let's not miss this opportunity of the holidays to find the connective tissue that will bring them into our hearts. 
because that's where they live. They live in our hearts. They live in our memories. So let's not um, lose these opportunities to experience that connective tissue, right? And so again, it's about identifying what your needs are and being willing to articulate your needs with the family that is around you, whatever the hopes are, whatever the fears are, and being curious about what their hopes for the holidays are and what their fears of the holidays are and navigating those waters together. I'm so looking forward to being with you all in the coming days on Wednesday and then again on Friday. On Wednesday, we're going to be talking about um, healthy mourning in terms of how do we use the holidays to convert our grief to mourning because that's what healthy mourning is all about. It's about converting our grief to mourning and being really present to what's going on. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about the steps that we take moving forward, going gently, because here's the caveat on everything. Going gently with ourselves and others and being mindful of self-care. <coughs> this is why I have both tea and water. Going gently with ourselves and with each other means that we're very mindful of what we need and that we speak it with honesty and with clarity. So with that, I do want to share with you uh, one piece of information. <coughs> we have a program. The Healthy Morning 2020 program was a program that was based on my book. My book, for those of you who don't know, was released a year ago this coming Friday, the Friday of Thanksgiving weekend. Because Thanksgiving is such an important time, it felt really important for me to release the book on the Friday of Thanksgiving last year. And so the book Healthy Morning, Happy Loving was released a year ago. And so I want to celebrate that. And um, all year long, Healthy Morning 2020 has been about exploring week by week the 52 ways to convert grief to mourning that are in this book. Now, I didn't map out the weeks. I didn't even realize that it was 52 until it was already written. Um, so that was such a happy coincidence for me. And then I discovered that um, they're, they're not necessarily grouped the way if I had done it consciously, I might have grouped them. And so this year has been a journey through the Healthy Morning book to un better understand what each conversion technique is all about. And now I'm seeing how um, grouping them together might be really helpful moving forward. So Healthy Morning uh, 2021 is going to be about these groupings. And the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to group together holiday conversion techniques. So as an experiment, I started doing that, and I now have this holiday packaging, if you will. We also have the remainder of Healthy Morning 2020. And so what I did was I said, all right, I'm actually going to run through the month of December both programs, 2020 and 2021 together. And for anybody who registers for Healthy Morning 2020, you will be grandfathered into 2021 at the same price that you signed into 2020 for, because the price is about to go up. Unbeknownst to me, as I was doing this, I was looking at what this coming week is all about. Would you believe week 47 is gratitude in grief? Isn't that just perfect for the Thanksgiving week? So Tuesday mornings is when we gather to go through the chapter and talk about the chapter, and the chapter this week is gratitude and grief. So tomorrow morning, in Healthy Morning 2020, we're going to be talking about gratitude and grief. In December, we're going to kick up and, and start 2021 and kind of overlap 2020 and 2021. I was going to raise the prices this week, and people in the 2020 group right now said to me last week, can we extend this the price that we bought into for one more week? And I sat with that request and I thought, you know what? In honor of the year anniversary of the book, in honor of Thanksgiving and gratitude for everything that this year has shown me and all of the lives that I've gotten to be a part of, I've gotten to touch, 
Absolutely. So we're extending the price for one more week, and, and it really is thanks to the people in the group who asked me to do this. So $49 US a month. It's a subscription. It's a monthly subscription, and it's $49 US dollars a month. And what you get for that is every week we go through a different conversion technique. In the month of December, we're going to be doing the 2020 ones. We're going to finish off the book. Um, but we're also going to be doing specialized ones for the holidays. So we're going to do an additional set. Um, and we also do a monthly Q&A. And I got to tell you, those Q&As, and for those of you, I know some of you are in this, uh, in this live right now who are in the group as well. Feel free to make comment about what your experience has been in this. And I'm going to share some testimonials because I've gotten some phenomenal testimonials about what those Q&As in particular have done for people. And so know that we do a monthly Q&A, know that we do weekly Facebook Lives just like this, and we get right to the core and the crux of how do we convert our grief to mourning with ease and grace? How do we take what's going on on the inside and convert it into an external expression that releases it from the body, releases it from the mind, and allows us to be present to what is here right now? So... My hope is that you will, all, um, you will all find your journey through the holidays that is true for you and that you will honor your own holidays, right? Um, I see wishes for beautiful Thanksgiving in the comments, um, blessings, oh, beautiful, beautiful blessings being sent out. It's really lovely to see. At the end of the day, this is what holidays provide for us. They provide for us an anchor that allows us to anchor into what is true today. It provides us the memory of the past, and it provides us a hope for the future. Just think of the book A Christmas Carol. That's what was written about in that book, right? Where you have the ghost of Christmas past, you have the ghost of Christmas present, and you have the ghost of Christmas future. How we walk this particular holiday season is influenced by everything that is happening for us right here today. In order to claim a better tomorrow, we need to move through what is true for us today. We can do that with family, right? Yeah. I, I see um, a comment here about uh, about Ireland and that we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in Ireland. And I really appreciate that, you know, I'm in Canada and, and we had our Thanksgiving in October and it's really true. And yet there is something also true that when the U.S. celebrates Thanksgiving in November, somehow that seems to be the start of the holiday season worldwide. Um, I know that, uh, you know, I was in England last year and, and I know that what happens in, in Europe during the holidays is you have the holiday markets and they start really early. I was surprised by how early they start. Um, but again, it's it's so much about ensuring that the, the experiences of the holidays, the moments of the holidays, that they're woven within the fabric of what's true for us in this holiday season, right? So traditions that we've had in the past for any holiday, Thanksgiving or otherwise, it's, um, it starts now, and our preparation for it, our preparation around identifying what our needs are and, and may be in the coming month, identifying what the hopes and the fears are, all of that is part and parcel. So I think now is a really good time for all of us worldwide to just bring mindfulness to our holiday season so that it really can be the best that it can be and it can support us in our grief journey, not be a detractor or a distractor from our grief journey. So with that, we'll wrap up for today. I look forward to being with you Wednesday morning. For those of you who are with me uh, in Healthy Morning 2020, I look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Uh, well, morning my time. I know for some of you, it's it'll be in the afternoon. Um, I look forward to those of you who want to join us for this journey, I'll put the link into the description so that you can just click on the link, learn more about the program. Feel free to direct message me if you've got any questions about it. I'd be happy to answer. And to all of you who 
are celebrating Thanksgiving this week. Much love to you. Many blessings for your Thanksgiving week. And for those of you who are just stepping into the holidays um, in other parts of the world, may we all step into this holiday season with peace in our hearts and, and an easing of, of the sorrows that we carry. Let, let the holidays be a balm instead of a stressor. Much love to you all. Namaste.